Hey, what's up guys? So I got some pretty sad news today. Uh, earlier today, the libs tied me down and put the Pfizer vaccine right into my arm. Now, as someone who is dealing with the effects right now, I can tell you I'm becoming more democratic by the second. Like earlier today, I, uh, I was seeing a, a woman breastfeeding and for some reason I was okay with that. <laughs> Not only that, um, but I'm pretty sure they slipped the gay gene in there because I was looking at some dudes earlier. Uh, you know, I saw a picture of Seth MacFarlane and I was just like, just got rock hard. Um, so I don't know what that's about. Yeah, thanks Biden. By the way, if you couldn't already tell, that was all a joke. No, except for the vaccine part, I did get that. Um, and, and also about the part where I like men. But anyways, so today, um, I wanted to do another rant video. And uh, today's rant, I wanted to talk about gaming. <laughs> I'm a gamer. <laughs> now, I realize that me sitting out here in the middle of this fucking park for some goddamn reason and ranting to you about why gaming was better back in my day than it is now is the most hipster old man bullshit that you've ever heard. But I don't care! You clicked on this video so you know what you're in for. Oh god! <laughs> so I'd like to take a journey back to a forgotten era called the early 90s, when uh, video games were still sort of new at this point. Arcades were popping. There was such a, like a sense of wonder and community still about gaming. It was a time when the newest and hottest graphics looked like this. No, that's grass. No, look over right there. Oh. Yeah. When the only way to play a multiplayer game was to go over to your friend Steven's house who had a fucking Xbox as his parents were rich as hell and he would throw shit at you while you sniped him in Halo 2. When the only way that you could actually go and get a game is if you physically got up off of your sad twin size bed, went and begged your parents, you say, Dad, Please, I want this new N64 or PS2 game. Please, Papa, please, give me it. And he would be like, oh, does your mom let you play? What is this? Grand Theft Auto Vice City? And you're like, yeah, of course, yeah, I'm like nine years old, it's fine. Divorced parents, am I right, guys? High five. When game stores or internet cafes existed everywhere, so you could actually play the game before you even bought it. And I just missed that, you know? Like, when you would go and get a game and plop it in your fucking shitty N64 system, and it would just start, you know? Not. 40 fucking gigabytes of updates, of unavoidable updates that make the game even fucking playable. Like Jesus Christ, I had to delete five games just to install one game. You wanna play Skyrim or Red Dead Redemption 2? Oh, well get rid of fucking 80, 80 other games. Just get, fuck them, get rid of them. Ah, oh, terrific, I'm so glad I bought this 400 fucking dollar box of bullshit that carries like five games at a time. Fuck! <laughs> Well, hold on there, Destry. Don't forget, you can just re-download it because you've already purchased it. You can just, you can just re-download that thing. Yeah, I can. And then it has to take 40 fucking years so that I can download all the updates again. And, and this is all coming from someone who has pretty decent, like, normal internet. Can you even imagine how mad I would be if I had shitty fucking internet? Also, having all of your games on a cloud just pisses me the f Fuck off. Like, I am a type of person who I like to actually be able to physically hold and caress and lick. I like to fuck with it. <laughs> now, everything is on some cloud while the cloud just snuggles and fucks your game. We are all being cucked by a cloud. I also want to talk about the frequency at which games are released now because I don't know if you remember this, but like way back, back in my day, way back like in the early 2000s, games used to just fly out. And yeah, like most of them fucking sucked ass, but it was also at a time where like every once in a while, out of the hundreds of games that came out, there was one or two rare gems that made all the other shitty games worth it. And hey, this is this is an unpopular opinion, but I actually like shitty games, okay? Well, Destry, if you like shitty games, then you probably love this generation of gaming, because all of them are shit. Like, the amount of games that would come out every year just based on movies was fucking awesome. Or even, like, weird fucking games that, like, tried something new because there wasn't, like, a specific formula back then of shit that worked every single time. So like, people would just try new shit and it might not have been it for everyone, but you know, it was still unique. There was a sense of uniqueness in gaming, like back in the early 2000s, that has been completely lost now. Now it takes like 200 fucking years for a game to be released because everyone's so concerned with the lighting and the fucking graphics and it's just like, who gives a shit? I don't give a fuck about graphics. Look, my favorite game is Banjo-Kazooie, and this shit looks terrible. But graphics don't equate 
to a great game. But nowadays it's like, oh, I just spent uh, three years doing the lens flares on this game. <laughs> like, who the fuck spends three years on lens flares? Holy fucking God. And the hilarious thing too, is like you'll get an announcement for a game, right? And then it takes several years to get completed. And by the time it's fucking done, it's unplayable and no one wants to play it anymore after like a month. Looking at you, Ooh. cyberpunk. And yeah, I'm obviously like singling out big companies, you know, like I'm, I'm more than aware that a indie community exists out there that is fucking releasing banger after banger. You know, side scrollers, arcade shooters, the occasional 3D platformer that tickles you in places that should be illegal for you to be tickled in. So I'm aware that those haven't gone anywhere. I'm just mainly talking about the games that are popular and in the public eye of like everyone, which for whatever fuck all reason is always a first person shooter. Like, hey, I like first person shooters, but not to the point where every game should have to be one so that it could succeed. Whoa, bud, your argument's kind of falling apart there. I mean, the most popular games in 2021 are Fortnite, Minecraft, and Grand Theft Auto V, and none of those are first person shooters. You know what all those are also? Massive IPs that have been popular for fucking like eight years, since like 2017. As has League of Legends, World of Warcraft, Dota, like all those fuckers. And also, by the way, most of those are all behind massive paywalls. <clears throat> and that's another thing that drives me fucking insane about gaming now, is while it's not prevalent in every single game, you have to admit, that the amount of games now that exist that are behind some fucking paywall or have some pay to win format is ridiculous. Like the whole loot box shit needs to fucking stop. But the fact of the matter is it never fucking will because people keep paying for them. You know what companies like? Money. Yeah, and this isn't just like a PC gaming thing or a console gaming thing. In fact, the biggest offenders of this are fucking mobile games. So I was gonna bring up the fact that like portable game systems don't really exist anymore, but that's not entirely true when like incredible graphics can be achieved on your phone or you could like take your Switch wherever you go. So portable gaming is still very much a thing, but I'm not even gonna get into how fucking nasty nasty saturated the market is of just shitty cash grabby games that exist out there. Some of which I've had to promote for the sake of my channel, but that still doesn't excuse the fact that they fucking suck. Like I feel sorry for the people that are growing up now that are going to look back on their youth and be like, oh man, I, I grew up playing Clash of Clans. Like no, no. No! Like, think about a game that made your childhood, you know? Like, a game that probably even still to this day, you play every year, or something that you look back fondly on. I have like 50 of those. Can you even imagine if one of those games, if one day you're looking back on all the games that you used to play, and you're feeling nostalgic, and you say, Man, I really miss when I used to play Subway Surfers! Subway Surfers! What is this? Oh, you know what this fucking is? It's another Temple Run goddamn fucking clone. How is this still the number one, like, most popular thing? What the fuck are people doing on their phones? Like, find some other game to enjoy. Jesus fucking Christ. I just really like sw uh, sw swiping one way, and my character goes this way, and then I swipe the other way, and the character goes over here, and then I just got collected coins and shit. Like, I'd want to end my fucking life being nostalgic about some of the games I just listed, dude. You know what? I can't trash talk uh, Plants vs. Zombies, okay? That's this a dope game. And something that I touched on a little bit earlier in this video is sort of more the social aspect about gaming, which, as much as I've bitched and moaned and complained through this whole video, is something that is not better, but still remains strong to this day, with things like streaming and video playthroughs on YouTube, you know, like, people are still very interested in a community around gaming. Gaming conventions, despite how cringy they always are. Like, there is a much more massive uh, community around gaming than there was back in, like, the early 90s and early 2000s. You know, finding people that are passionate about the same games that you are is easier now than it ever has been. Like, one of my best friends I found because of our shared love of our favorite game of all time, Banjo-Kazooie. Damn it! You fucked it out! I you can never get that jiggy again! And we literally wouldn't have met had there not been a social element, a social aspect that exists online that allows people to meet that share common interests in gaming. This is getting way too cheerful. When are you gonna, when are you gonna complain about something else? I'm so glad you asked, because it's right fucking now. I miss <laughs> the IRL, in real life, social implications of gaming. It's great that online fucking social gaming things exist, but what about when you could walk down to a fucking arcade and 
go play Tetris or Galaga or fucking Asteroids or whatever the shit you play and you can meet people that way. What happened to that? Like when arcades were the sickest thing to go and hang out. Like you could pick up babes at arcades. You could pick up babes at arcades. <laughs> Think about how cool it was in like early 2000s, late 90s when you could go to a fucking arcade or go to a mall and just everyone was there. Like everyone was there. You weren't cool unless you went to a fucking arcade. Now it's like arcades still exist, but they're more like novelty things. Like if you go into an arcade, chances are you're fucking like 30 to 50 years old. I understand that I'm also balding, but I don't want to hang out with any 50 year olds. Oh! Yuck. Like a really great example of the IRL social implications of gaming is the first few months of Pokemon Go. Take a journey with me guys back to when Pokemon Go first came out and everyone was outside exploring the fucking world, exploring places they'd never been. And not only that, but there would be other people there doing the same thing fighting bosses, collecting Pokemon. I would go up to people and say, hey, what's going on over there? I see that there's like 30 people. They would say, there's a fucking Dragonite. I'd be like, oh shit, bye, bitch. I'm gonna go catch that fucking Dragonite. And I would catch a bitch load of Flareons, dude, and I would name them gross shit, like Herpes 1 and Herpes 8. That way, when they have to go to the gym, they have to fight my Pokemon literally called Herpes. <laughs> dude, I miss that time so badly. Like, I, I'm not sure if if we could get any statistics of this, of like how many people met during that time and have lasting fucking friendships because of Pokemon Go. And I'm not specifically only singling out Pokemon Go. Other things have existed, but that was the biggest. That was the most influential. It spread like wildfire. Everyone was fucking doing it. Old ladies were doing fucking Pokemon Go. There was a bitch in fucking like Japan who had like seven or eight different phones and she was just carting down the street catching Pokemon for people. She made a living out of Pokemon Go. That's so sick. It was so cool to see the passion in other people as you were out in the real world. Maybe I'm just, I just am nostalgic, you know, now, obviously. With the kind of games that I enjoy, the kind of games that I will watch my friends play, the kind of games that I will play on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Kevinus. Like, maybe it's just that I'm feeling nostalgic and I wish that simpler games existed. It's like every fucking person wants me to either join some stupid Fortnite match with them or fucking play some scary games so that I'd shit my pants on stream again. Did I say again? I don't know, maybe I'm just a grouchy asshole, all right? I'll let you guys be the determining factor of, is Destry a grouchy asshole? Probably, dude. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm a grouchy asshole. Well guys, that's gonna do it <laughs> for this uh, rant about pretty much nothing. If you stuck around, thank you so much. And uh, also, if you've stuck around, make sure to like this video, also subscribe to the channel uh, to be told when I make new videos. They're not always like this, and they're not always this angry, but I'm sure you'll enjoy them. That said guys, I'm gonna go get a quinoa bowl and uh, wear a crop top and join my fellow Democrats in protest. What are we protesting? I don't know. We're just angry about stuff, so we gotta go.